Okay, everybody, this is it. We've been waiting for this feature here on the Harland Highway. We finally have a phone number that you guys can call in, leave a quick, brief message, and we might play it on the show, and I can give you advice. I can give you my thoughts. I can make jokes about it. You can you can leave any message you want. Uh, give us a call, and let's just see what that number is here. Get the old peepers on. 323 323- Six nine six zero two two two. We'll put that number right up on the screen here. Give us a call, leave a message, and uh, maybe you'll be on the Harland Highway podcast. Because everyone in my life golfs. Everyone in your life, dude. I get invited to golf mostly because old guys love me. So like old guys would be like, "I'll pick you up on Sunday. We'll go golf." And I'm like, "All right." So old I'm, guys I'm, love you. Screw golf. Just head down to the bathhouse. <laughs> yeah, but they want to do there. old guy stuff for me. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know? You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. Yeah. Yeah. F with it. I like that. That's yeah, sort of keep like it code. clean for you. Is that that's code though, right? F when yeah. you say F. Whenever I say F, I'm I'm uh, just abbreviating the word fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is. That's what officially yeah. it is. It's PG. Yeah. F. So I don't F with it. So that's just to shorten it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, maybe it means something different. Maybe it's French. F. Oh yeah. EF French off. <laughs> but wait, is it is just out of curiosity, is it because you don't have the energy for the other three letters or were you No, over- I've got the energy. I you say do? a lot of F bombs. Yeah, but you know, it's just like if maybe some children were listening to the Harlan Highway. Oh. You know, keep it clean for them. I don't need them going. I learned the F word from Jeff Dye. So you're just saying the F out of concern for yeah. the youngins. That's right. Yeah, I want to make sure nobody's Got offended it. by the F word. Wow, that's considerate. You do that, right? You're a clean guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard you curse. You no, curse? I'm, I don't do it much. Yeah. I do. I do it like sort of in private when I'm with buddies. Yeah. Like if I'm fishing or we're doing something crazy, but like bowling. Yeah. But I don't, I'm, I'm not too much of a cursor on stage. It's hard to bowl and not shout the F word. Yeah. That is tough. Unless you're really good at bowling, then it's easy not to. But. Well, even when you're good, when you get a good hit, then you like F. F yeah. 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 No, I get that. Um, before we jump into it, by the way, folks, uh, Jeff Dye is here. Uh, comedian, writer, actor. Um, am I missing anything, buddy? That's, those are the yeah comedian. The three yeah. um, plight around children. I'm a terrible actor. You are? Yeah. Why? Um, it feels weird. I haven't found like my acting voice. You know? Really? I could play myself in something, but the, like I played myself in the or I pl- I was in a movie not that long ago. Yeah. And they go cut, and I was like, you know, what happened? And they <laughs> yeah, they yeah. go, you're supposed to be like cool, you know? Yeah. You're a, you're a drug guy. Yeah. I'm not a drug guy in real life. And yeah. I was like, I don't know how to do that. They're like, yeah, it's, it's called acting. You've got to act like yeah. you're that. And I was like, oh, yeah. I just, I can do me. Yeah. But uh, unless the character's not just like me, I'm not very good. But see, you saying that makes me feel hope because I, whenever you watch these actors, like the serious ones like Hoffman, Sean Penn or whatever, they always say, just be you. Oh. Just like, I always hear that note, just be yourself. The more you can just be you... When I'm good at that acting. part. So maybe you're destined to be a great yeah. actor. But don't give me some role that isn't me. Yeah. Because then I'll go, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. yeah. You're a great actor. We were talking about it before we started. Well, I don't know if I'm great, but I enjoy it. See, I, for me, the acting is to not be me. I like jumping into, I like, yeah. I love finding other characters. That's so, good acting. Right? Yeah. That's, see, that's what I was, that's what I wish I was. And did you see the way I had my hand going? Like, <laughs> that wasn't real. That was part of me yeah, it was an actor. dramatizing it was the situation. It was like a tiny frog I pictured. I was like doing acting on you without you knowing, but then you knew I was acting. And so... Only, in, only when you told me. Really? Yeah, that's how I was, I was hoodwinked. Wow. I like that word. Or as I say, aged. <laughs> 
Yeah, you don't want kids picking that one want, up. You don't want them getting that one. That's even longer than F. <laughs> you know what's funny is the I was uh, last time I did the Tonight Show. I wanted to open with a joke. They scrapped it. Oh, the T S. Yeah, the T S. Yeah, yeah, the T S W J F. Wow. Yeah. Also a sexuality these days. By the <laughs> yes, way, yes, it's yeah. Yeah, they're adding it. Yeah, we don't That's know what, what plus it is. is there. Yeah, and this T W F S. <laughs> Warner Brothers Paramount Plus. TSWJF with Jimmy Fallon. Oh, yeah, Disney P-P. Plus. P-P. Yeah, That's Disney hard. Paramount Plus. That's all I know about the features. It's going to be hard to remember things well, for sure. Is that why they do the whole the whole um, the, 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 the LGBQ plus because they're planning to add more letters? Hey, what are you asking me for, buddy? Well, you're acting like you're straight right now. <laughs> It's acting. Some pretty good acting. <laughs> so wait, the uh, Tonight yeah, the Show. Plus, the plus on LGBTQ2 plus means more is coming. Is Buck, that what it is? up, yeah. For they're, sure. They're saying we don't want to close this off. How many more can there be, for God's sake? I don't know. It's very strange. I wonder if they start, is there a world where we start creating new letters? Well, maybe they could each be different communities. Why does it have to be the same community? Yeah. You know. Why can't the twos be their own community? Why do they got to be in the LGB? The twos? Yeah, the two spirits. You know about these people? No. Yeah, they have two spirits. Like inner spirits? Yeah, two of them. What, what's the first one? And who knows? This I don't know. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss character. <laughs> it's real. Someone told me there's two spirits. And then I wanted to come up with a bunch of stereotypes and do comedy about the two spirit people. Because most people don't know much about them, but you know, they drive terrible. You know, and they're obsessed with bubble wrap. You know, they, really? you know these two spirits. The two, are. See, I thought maybe it was an indigenous uh, peoples. Well, I don't know because you throw two spirits. I picture a guy on a horse with war paint oh, on. Yeah. Like it seems like like a a two Native spirits. American two oh, yeah. spirits. The two spirits are coming. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Oh. I don't know what it is. I mean, I I feel like if any two spirits are watching the show, they're going to say, "Hey, I drive fine." You know, they're going to get mad at me for doing this, but uh, I think that'd be, I thought it'd be funny if we came up with some stereotypes for them. For the two spirits. Yeah. Doesn't someone already have that stereotype, though? And we don't need to say who, but doesn't somebody have... Women. (laughs) The W's. That's their thing. The The W's. W's. Yeah, Yeah. my bad. The F's. The females. F the W's. Whoa, wait a minute. This one's edgy. This is an edgy This is an edgy... I didn't mean to bring this out of you. Dude, this is an edgy E. I, I L this one. I should have just said the F word, shouldn't I? Have? No, I, th- I think I think what you're doing is right. Okay. We live in a sort of a toxic, acerbic yeah. kind of world, and it doesn't seem like everyone's necessarily got children's best interests in mind. And for you to barge in here, here I am, and to have the concern, yeah, and to be looking out for the youngins, yeah. Bro, I don't hey, get that from a lot of guests. I, uh, you know, you were you made a on one of your prior episodes. You yeah. you, you said you were saying that the word the b word is very toxic. You know, mm. yeah, well, you, it is. I don't yeah. like that word. Right, I don't like the b word. I like the f word more than I like the b word because the f word is sort of generic to everyone. Yeah, and the b word zones in on one gender and i yeah. have four beautiful wonderful sisters yeah and i every, every time i hear that word i don't like it um yes are your sisters older than you or younger two younger two older oh, right so in the, right middle, in the middle sandwich boy. only brother yeah oh wow i'm the only boy i'm the only boy but i was the baby how many sissies? Uh, two older sisters. Wow. But they had a bunch of their friends around all the time. So, oh. so it felt like I had like six sisters. There was always women just, you know. Did you score with the sisters' friends a lot? No. Me neither. Yeah, what never once. Not even once. And you only had two. I had four. There should have been some. <laughs> and younger, yeah. There should have been some residual like drop off. Yeah. I was a late bloomer. Oh, man. Were you a late bloomer? No, I wore pants. Nice. <laughs> Um, but, um, wait, <laughs> do you, I want to, before we get too deep into this, first of all, let me hit the theme music. Here we oh, go, yeah. folks. Uh, mm-hmm. well now, that's right. You on the Holland Highway podcast and, uh, what a guest we have today. I already introduced him, uh, JD, Jeff Dye. And, uh, buddy, welcome to the show. Thanks before we, me. before we get any deeper into it. Do you like saving money? I do. Can I give you a money tip? Yes, please. Which will benefit you now and in the afterlife. Oh, wow. That's 
Long time. Who who gives you this kind of financial advice? I've never advice? had it, yeah. Here we go. All right. So, as you know, everything costs money. Yeah. Even when we die. And when you get a gravestone done, you have to get it engraved with your name and a little saying. Yeah. And every damn letter costs money. So, what I want to offer up to you, so you can plan, okay. is an apostrophe D. Oh, and this will help you save big time. Explain that. Well, now you don't have to, you know, here lies, you know, blah, uh, blah, blah, blah. So now you can just put the apostrophe D after die. Yeah. And your gravestone, it just says Jeff died. Yeah. Done. Save some letters. Save letters, save engraving, save money. Wow. It's from well, me to you. My relatives are going to thank, my sisters are going to thank you for this. Just from me Save to you. some scratch, you know. Dude. Good uh, man. I thought it was an ad read or something, and I was really just, you know, prepping for your ad uh, read. No, you're really helping me with... Uh, helping you save bucks, guy. You're good. Have you thought about what you want on your gravestone? Like, what do you want it to say? <sighs> How you want to be remembered? You know, I think I have <laughs> a little bit. It's it's my kind of my motto that I live by where I go, um, l- l- live, live life, don't let life live you. And I don't know if I can put that. Is that past tense or he lived life? He yeah. didn't let life live him. Oh, I like that. Yeah, you know, it's a little, it's a little more serious. Like you'd probably expect it to be comedic because I'm, yeah. I like comedy. But that's sort of my credo that I live by. I like that. What, yeah. what is that? What about you know? My dad reads that. He's like, well, I gotta work. <laughs> What is this guy? We can't all be on movies and telling jokes, you know? I had to let life live me so my kids could eat. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's it's like it it's like you should dictate your life the way you want it to be. Still have the kids and whatever you want to do, but it doesn't mean it reflects my lifestyle. It just means you as an individual enjoy your life. Like live your life. Yeah. Don't don't let all the rules and all the all the barriers and the boundaries and the you know, just live your life. You I know? like that. Yeah. What's on your gravestone? I think uh, it'll say last words and then it'll say, uh, check this out. You know, or watch this. I feel like those would be my last oh. words, you know? Watch this. His last words were like, hey, check this out. And then, then I'll probably do something stupid and die. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Like, that'll be like me and be like, hey, check this out. Like, yeah. I, I was going for a laugh, even in the yeah. end, you know? You're, and it's maybe one of those inter- Instagram posts <laughs> where you're on the edge of a cliff on the Grand Canyon. Hey, check this out. <laughs> ah, and then your gravestone just reads, ah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, like 17 A, <laughs> 1 A and 15 H's. It's perfect. A lot of letters, though, you know? Yeah. Jeff, Back to the problem. Yeah, man. just Jeff died. Do you think that that's going to get updated? Like cemeteries, gravestones? Like we haven't really updated this. Yeah. Everything else is going to modern times. And it, we, it, we've seen an upgrade in everything. Yeah. Not the, not the, the, the what are those called? Cemeteries. Cemeteries. Not a cemetery. Well, you Very know. Very old. It's funny. I, I approached a buddy of mine probably had to be over maybe 18 years ago. I had an idea to do a digital cemetery mm. where you just go online and, you know, it's this service and they have a page dedicated to your loved ones with a video clip with, I think it's called Facebook actually, but, it, but it, it's, it's, it's for the dead. It's for the dead. Yeah. Right. And I thought everyone's got deceased people this way. They don't have to go to a cold, depressing graveyard, yeah. which people don't really do like, I hate to say it, but I don't know that I've ever gone to visit very many people in a graveyard. It's yeah. too, it's too depressing. It is depressing. Also, it, it's um, we forget how many people have been forgotten. You know, yeah. you know, like I, I, I would visit my parents' gravestones. Yeah, I, uh, I've, I've been to my oldest sister's gravestone. Um, I think if I have kids. You know, they they might go to my parents' gravestone. They're definitely not going to go to their parent. They didn't meet yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, we've there's got a lot of forgotten people in the. In it's the, all forgotten. Yeah, and then you go, hey, is that the she played Princess Leia? And then you're just kind of like, mm, you know, or yeah. or Lemmy from like uh, cool. <laughs> you see his grave. Oh, Laverne cool. and Shirley. <laughs> Lemmy? Is that? Oh, wow. That's the exact Lemmy, yeah. Wow. Uh, but I'm saying, like, unless you're famous enough, that yeah. it, whatever. But so, like, there needs to be a new idea because it yeah. is taking up a lot of land. It's too. taking up a lot of land. I mean, that, those could be golf courses. That's how I thought. You know what I it. mean? Yeah. 
Or it might be fun if they left them as golf courses and when they buried people, especially fatties, they just buried them about this far underground with their mouths open. And you could say, hey, I just uh, putted into Delta Burke's mouth. Yeah, just you know? made it in Princess Leia. You know what I mean? It's a big I just, deal. I just popped it into Princess Leia's open mouth. If it is on the fairway, too, yeah. and you're just driving, uh, you know, it would really punish those bad golfers. You know, someone yeah. sucks, and you're like, you idiot. You hit it in the graveyard. You got to <laughs> yeah. go find your ball. You're yeah. chipping through the... So maybe it would, you know, maybe like keep it the same. I like this idea. Yeah, and think of the wonders the golf shoes would do for the stiffies. Oh, yeah. Like aerating their skin, giving the maggots more holes to go in and out. You're helping. You're helping them decompose. We take good care of these golf courses, and, we, you know, this way it, the cemeteries get as much care. Right. I think you're doing the Lord's work. That's right. That's what I think. Yeah, and then you get a hole in one, or you make a good putt. Some little guy runs out with flowers, and, you know, you reward it, right? This is a $100 idea, right? Yeah, here. yeah. God. Do you golf? I'm trying to get into golfing. Do you oh, golf? Yeah. I tried it, but I grew up playing hockey, uh, like French Canadian. I had to play hockey. So you'll tee off, and then the next guy goes up. You start fighting him. <laughs> well, I, was, I wasn't. Although I did, I did have to break up a fight on a golf course. Once. Really? Yeah, bizarrely. <laughs> but but because I grew up playing hockey, I could never get the swing like yeah. out of hockey land. Yeah, like you got your hand way low on it. Yeah, like, not like that. Yeah, like when I'd line up to hit the ball off yeah. the tee, man, it was always like a little wonky because I just was so hockey coordinated. Yeah. I am baseball guy, which means... Oh, nice. Yeah, I played baseball my whole life. Oh, uh, wow. Not at like a high level or anything, but it's yeah. just a big interest of mine. Yeah. And so I I bend my wrists, and in in golf, that's terrible. Yeah, right. So the ball just slices. Yeah. I, I mean, I had like 400 yards, but then it's not straight, so yeah. it just looked like a dope. Yeah. But I'm going to learn how, because everyone in my life golfs. Everyone in your life. Dude... I get invited to golf, mostly because old guys love me. So, like, old guys would be like, I'll pick you up on Sunday. We'll go golf. And I'm like, all right. So Old I'm, guys I'm, love you? Screw golf. Just head down to the bathhouse. <laughs> yeah, but they want to do there. old guy stuff for me. <laughs> okay. You know? yeah. So they want to go golf. They never want to have sex with me. You know, oh, it's just God, all will. cigars and golf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> but I'm like, I should probably get good at this. This, yeah. is, this is not, um, you know, it's not going anywhere that people keep wanting me to golf. Wait, what do you mean you play baseball? Like, what? what's your position? You- um, well, growing up, I loved first base. And, why? Uh, and shortstop. Why, why did I like that? I always found first base too much pressure. Well, I like that you get a lot of action. You right? do. So you get the ball a always. lot. Always, yeah. But it's not as much pressure as, like, pitcher or catcher. It's, yeah. like, the third most touching the ball. So I feel like it's, like, the uh, third most pressure. Yeah. But there's a lot of attention on it. I don't know. I always, I always felt very nervous at yeah. first base. I like it. What, 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 did you ever play baseball growing up? Or? A little bit. I did some pitching, and I liked Hockey. to hit. Canada stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't do base. I mean, I didn't even know. I don't know what sports are like up there. It's oh, cold, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's hockey. Well, it's the land. You know, hockey and lacrosse were uh, born in Canada. Didn't know that. Yeah, so it's hockey and lacrosse and then everything else, but... You grew up in uh, Portland, right? Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. Seattle. And baseball was so fun. Like I was obs- I don't know what it is about baseball. I'm like obsessed yeah, with what it. Is Even it? this day, I watch baseball all the time. I look really? my Instagram's my Instagram feed is just huh. baseball stuff. And like also the Instagram feed like will send you old things. So <laughs> so like I'll send a I'll like send one of the Instagram things to my buddy like you see this trade yeah. trade rumor and he's like that's from like six months ago and I was like oh, oh. I didn't know. so it's all like baseball I have a ton of baseball in my life who's your favorite player of all time it's tough it's got to be Ken Griffey Jr. why because I grew up in Seattle so in Seattle oh. it goes it goes God huh. your dad and then Griffey and probably higher is Griffey. All right, so take your hometown out of the equation. Yeah. And just on talent level, not that Ken Griffey wasn't a talent, but <laughs> just like take all the emotion all and just looking at the game, yep. who was your favorite? Nolan Ryan. The pitcher? Yeah. Why? Nobody can touch his records. Really? I didn't no, know that. He'll, no one will ever touch it. So he's like the Gretzky Jordan of, of pitchers? In my opinion, yeah. And these are statistic- actually it's inarguably st- he's statistically yeah. he's the number one. I think the most no hitters anyone's ever thrown is three. That's a, that's my guess. I think it might be two. Yeah, Nolan Ryan has seven. 
I didn't know this. Yeah, he has the most strikeouts in a single what? season. Wow. He has two no hitters in the same season, which has never happened. Really? He wow. um, he threw a no hitter at the oldest age. He has the most two hitters, three hitters, and four hitters. Oh, sorry, the most one hitters, two hitters, and three hitters. The most no hitters. He has every record except Cy Young, which is voted on by baseball. Yeah people did he stay sorry i don't know more about this but did he stay consistently with one team most of his career no. or did they how does a guy like that get traded away i think he dictated that that's oh, my he guess did. Okay. yeah because he's like uh he's he was a met as a rookie okay and then he went to i might get this out of order if anybody's you know well real snobby about this but well. he went to the angels and then from the angels he went to the astros and then from the astros to the rangers um and the, i think it was based on where he wanted to live because he's like an old oh. Texan, and he's like, oh, okay. playing Houston. Yeah, and then yeah, they're yeah. like, well, you know, how about yeah. uh, Arlington? You know, and they yeah. shipped him off to a different Texas. Suddenly he's with the Bermuda Starfish. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. one of these old, yeah. grumpy guys. He'd play for anybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. You know a guy you'd love is Manny Ramirez. Oh, yeah, Manny, yeah. He, he's easily one of the funniest people in baseball. Like, he, he didn't understand... Like, he'd be like, just let me go play in the minor leagues. Dude, I kill it down there. Yeah. And they're like, you know, we want you to <laughs> yeah, yeah. play in the pros. He's like, I know, but when I was in AAA, I was hitting like, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. two home runs a game. And they go, I know, but <laughs> we need you up yeah. here. He's like, but if I was there, I'd be the greatest player. Yeah. He just couldn't understand. He kept trying to get him to trade him to the Pawtucket what Red the Sox. Hell? Yeah. For real? Yeah, he really wanted to. But didn't he, he must have known the, the money drop down. He had so much money. Yeah, he just wanted... That he didn't even get it. The he love of the like, game. Yeah, I just want to play baseball really high level. What do you think about the Japanese players that come into the, the league? Like, what's your take on them? Like, do they feel... Is, is, does, does the fact that they're Japanese, does that sort of take them out of that sort of American apple pie vibe? No way. Or do they fit in great? They fit in, in perfect. Pick? Also, okay. that's my favorite... One of my favorite things about baseball yeah. is, is, like, it's the most diverse sport ever. We have Dominicans, Cubans, Venezuelans, Japanese, Korean. Yeah. Uh, there's Canada. There's Canadians. There's literally Mexico is a, a yeah. huge. That's uh, true. But, but then also it's the most diverse in, in body size. You have guys that are really yeah. tall. You have guys that are short. You have fat, fat guys. guys. It's the only sport yeah. where you'll just see a big fat guy. Yeah. Like David Wells was drunk when he played, and he was a fat guy, yeah. and he was great. Yeah, he played for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah. My, my team, yeah. Yeah, they, you have like every shape yeah, and right. size. And it isn't just like certain like positions. Yeah. You know, you'll see like a, a six foot eight outfielder, six foot ten pitcher, you know, and then you'll see a short pitcher and you'll see a short outfielder. Yeah, you're right. It's pretty cool. It's funny because, yeah, you look at the landscape of hockey, the NHL, and it's, you know, there, there, there's maybe more Europeans, but it's, it's mostly 90, probably 8% predominantly white men. Yeah. Um, most of them North American. Them. Cold sport play or cold like area places, right? Yeah, well, yeah, technically, Russia, yeah. Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine, Sweden, oh, yeah. Denmark. Who's and where? then there's a the really good ones are the Eskimo players. Oh, <laughs> is they, that true? Oh yeah, they're so good. Charlie Nukunkunkunk with the uh, North Stars he crushes it. Unreal, and on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen him. Oh, God, yeah, that guy. he's never wearing the uniform. That's what's no. weird about that guy. He's He'll only, just wear what he wants. He's, he's the only guy out there with a caribou hide on. It's unbelievable. We were talking about Dave Wells playing drunk. I think that yeah. guy plays drunk. Yeah. I don't know. Wasn't there a, a famous pitcher that, I, in fact, I know there is. Maybe you know who it is. Who's who admitted he pitched a a World yeah. Series game on acid or something? Yeah. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, yeah. <laughs> Doc Ellis. Or, and didn't he, like, pitch a really good threw game? Threw a no-hitter. Yeah, he threw a no-hitter. It wasn't a playoff game or anything, but, wow. like, he just didn't know he was pitching. Yeah. And I guess, like, back in the day, like, in the 70s, a lot of the players would do drugs, like, during the season all the yeah, time. Yeah. It was pretty normal, like, I guess. Nobody talked about it, but it was, the you know, this thing that yeah. everyone knew. And so he, like, did drugs, and then uh, he took greenies is what he called them. I don't know what that means. I think it's an acid of some sort. Wow. And um, then his, his girlfriend's it's like, It's also hey. a dog treat, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> greenies? Greenies is actually a dog treat. Yeah, I hope that they're not the same thing. I don't know. It's really Randy Moss. You ever give your dogs firecrackers? He's like, no, Randy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did he say that? <laughs> yeah, he just say that. He gave his dog firecrackers? He was asking a, 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 a woman that we know, like, if she ever gave her dog firecrackers. Wow. And he was like, it makes your dog go crazy. You're like, yeah, that's why we don't Oh, yeah, dogs feed. hate it. 
No, he fed him to him. He fed lit? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a lit or what, but he's it's a very unusual question Whoa. to ask someone. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> so the guy threw a no hitter no on L S D. Yeah, and I guess it was like the most wild pitches ever, too. You think a no hitter, like, oh, just a nice No, he was throwing behind guys, he was throwing at guy, he hit guys. Yeah. Wow. Have you ever gone on stage on any type of substance? Oh yeah. You have? Yeah. Did it affect your game? Um, so one time I did mushrooms during yeah. the day. Okay. And then at night I was like, dude, I guess I, you know, I thought this would wear off by now. But right. Like, we're we're Six going hour in. high. Yeah, we're yeah. going in. So, wow. And the show was actually great. Really? Yeah, the show was amazing. I had a great show. Now. I wouldn't do it again, but. Was it great from mushroom high guy looking out or was it great from audience looking in and going, wow. The the crowd was like we've never seen oh. you like that, so it it made me communicate better for sure. Wow! Yeah. Now was that scary to a degree where you went, uh oh, that was something really good. Maybe I need to replicate that. Did, no, was there any? I, fear I saw of it that? as like, whew, I, I, uh, you made it through. We it. Made it through. We yeah. don't need to try that again. Right. Like that went well. Because I really? uh, I was I've been an alcoholic most of my life. You have? Uh, yeah, I'm 93 days sober, so I'm feeling good. Yeah, feel Buddy, great, that's very happy. Great. Good for you. Um, but there were so many times on stage that the substance was not in helping me. So you were drinking on stage. Oh yeah, and all the early shows uh-huh. crushing it, and all the late shows is like, what is this? You know, Did this you ever get hammering. like sloppy? Because oh, I yeah. I remember I used to see and hear about you know Mitch Hedberg. Just yeah. he'd go up on heroin oh wow and there were there were club owners that told me yeah mitch literally was just laying on his back on the stage doing his material like and he's such a legend that we think of that as it's almost like romanticized or cool but not me probably not Uh, to me it made me angry because i knew it was ultimately leading to his death yeah and it did if not his death i knew it was leading to a bad place and when he died, I, I just, I, I had sympathy, I yeah. had empathy, but I was also angry. I was like, dude, you, you shortchanged yourself. You yeah. shortchanged the world of your, your unique gift. And it was all there in front of you. And yeah. I, know, I know addiction's hard. It's not like, hey, I'm just quitting. Right. But it, it just, it made me mad that he did that. But I also have sympathy that, that it's, it's a tough thing to be. You know? I, have, I identify with that so much. Yeah. Because... I was, here's the thing. It's not like any of the late shows were like so terrible that I feel mad at myself, but it was unprofessional. It was really like selfish to just yeah. be that hammered on stage. Were you like super like slurring words? And- um, only a few times. Yeah. But it, still, they could have gotten a better show if I was more mm-hmm. alert and prepared yeah. instead of me just being, because the early shows were always great. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. I had a bad early show in yeah. like 20 years. But the late show is just like, you know, just something's off. I'm a little more negative. I'm a little more like, okay. I think I'm so cool. And it was, like, it was not cool. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's unprofessional and also just like, yeah, I, th- I don't know why. I just, I, I don't know how I didn't come to the conclusion of getting clean sooner. Was really. the impetus to drink just to kind of have more fun on stage? Or was it just, as you said, it was just problematic. You couldn't not do it. I, I could have not done it, but I just did. Because that was my, my habit of just drinking yeah. all the time, yeah. Was it like frosty beers or was it like hard alcohol? Uh, it was always uh, Jameson. And then right. I would like chase it with beers. But yeah. yeah, just, you know, like a bottle of Jameson a night. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Did you feel it tripped up your your timing and your your speed with the crowd, your reaction time? Yeah. It In ev- every one of those boxes you just said. Yeah. The advantage was that I didn't care. Oh, okay. So that's a great yeah. advantage is yeah. that like I don't give a, I, I, you know, like my like not giving an F. Yeah, uh, oh, show through. There it is. The so F-bomb. that's pretty cool. That yeah. like uh, that he's like, oh man, this guy will say anything. He's like fearless. Up yeah, there. but it was a fake kind of fearless, and it was a it was mm. you know using these other things that it was all these things working against me. But the only advantage was like I didn't you know someone complains like all right like I don't yeah. I don't care at all. Yeah, yeah, which takes in a weird way a certain amount of courage too, yeah. which is not maybe the courage you want. Did right. you? 
Did you ever carry that on to like a, a talk show appearance? Oh, yeah. Morning TV, I was always drunk. Really? Yeah, I was always drunk on morning TV. Really? Yeah, I didn't care at all. Also, it's okay if those go bad. Yeah, morning the morning TV, to, they, the, the, the hosts are probably twice as hammered as you are. And I hate them. That yeah. more, They make you do that morning TV? Oh, I just did it like last week in Denver. Oh, so terrible. Yeah. It's Wait, brutal. were you at uh, Comedy Works? Comedy Works in Denver. That's yeah, funny. Man. I They don't ask me to do it anymore. The TV or I the was, club? No, I was just at Comedy Works for <laughs> yeah. New Year's Eve. Yeah. Did like seven shows. Yeah. It, it was packed. We sold everything out. Yeah. Great weekend. They didn't even email my manager or agent about doing morning television. Oh, well, if everything was sold out. No, then... it's not that. I think they're just like, we've had him before. It's oh, all right. You... We don't need him. Did you have a specific one that just went off the rails big time that was like sort of, whoa. Um, yeah, one time. Here we go. A woman. Uh, it was, I think it was in Denver. Okay. Uh, she, I, well, wh- I, maybe I'm just making it up that it's Denver. Because there is a girl that's a feminist in Denver that has like a morning thing. And she hates me. So that's maybe why I'm Just because you're a man? Yeah, oh, in general. Yeah, she, she's one just of these things that men. just tries to find a way to poke you. And what was it she poked you? Like, what was the... No matter what it is. You know, like I would say yeah. a thing. She's like, huh, seems like you have like a thing about... And I'm like, no, I'm just making a joke. Oh, and then like I had like a pretty public... Um, breakup and she's okay. like she was she knew not to ask about it and she's like well if this is already going poorly i might as well just ask you and then she just asks me about the girl i was dating so that was annoying oh, um but the the one that went worse i think she said she was allergic to chocolate like she couldn't have chocolate so i suggested that if i was allergic to chocolate i'd just kill myself because i like chocolate so much <laughs> but it's me basically telling a morning yeah. television host she should take her life because she can't have chocolate yes yeah but i mean i just you know it's beautiful uh, so stupid but uh, are you are you allergic to anything what are, uh, what are your allergies this is what hang on let me this is a big question new segment Jeff die <laughs> Are you allergic to anything? I think that's an important question, guy. <laughs> like that music would be for you something know, deep. Right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> are you, what are you allergic to? I am unable to enjoy the, the uh, pleasure of penicillin. Wow, and it's yeah. so good when you're it's watching everywhere. a football game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, do you like the barbecue My buddy or the honey garlic? Penicillin donuts to the game, oh, and I, I was like, I can't. So sorry. I'll die. What happens to you? Do you swell up? Um, it might just be a child allergy. They gave it to me when I was a kid, and I like, oh, I they had to take me to the hospital. So I haven't tried it. But you might be through it. Maybe. Cause isn't that a thing? Don't kids? Here's, I'm just going to throw this out here. Next time, just as a throw, as a test. We should try it. Next time you get a sexually transmitted disease, give it a shot. Yeah, say, what's the harm? When you get that chlamydia next time, just pop a few in. That's, you know? Maybe I'll try it on a podcast. We'll just try some penicillin, just see what happens. See what happens. Because people do that with drugs all the time. They're always farting around with drugs. I'll try some penicillin, see what, see what shakes. Look at that. You want to kill me? That'll do it? Hazelnuts. You know what I like about you? This is, you can't have hazelnuts, yet you're fearless enough to keep it this close to you. Yeah. That's wild. You got to keep your enemies close, bro. <laughs> you, you are, yeah, literally. Like, if you wanted to kill me, I don't, we talked about gravestones earlier, Jeff Die. If you wanted to kill me, yeah. all it would take is a butter knife. What you, it, you take it out, you spread that all over me, what? which is what you do with Nutella, you spread it. <laughs> And I'm dead, bro. What a delicious way to go, though, huh? Well, for you. Have you had it before? Never yeah, tried it? Yeah, I have. That's how I know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts is what gets me, What's brush. wrong with God, man? Yeah. Why is he doing this? Why God want to play me like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, wh- like, why? It's just a nut that comes off of a tree, and it, it can kill our friend Harlan Williams. Why God want to run up on me and do a Rambo play, huh? Yeah, that goes to you, God. He's not asking me. But this is uh that's a that's hazelnut nothing else, uh, pine nuts. Really, some a lot of uh, a lot of nut legumes and nuts. Yeah, but wait a minute, legume is that Canadian? Legume? French? Isn't that mushroom? Oh, no, I think it's like a cashew as a legume. Legume also sounds like a body of water somewhere. <laughs> nice legume. Let's go canoeing up the legume and. Get some fucking uh, hazelnuts. Left my pole in the legume. Oh, God, I lost my virginity in the legume. 
It was a big, wide, stinky legume. <laughs> that day, too. So many things were lost that day. Yeah. But wait, don't most nuts grow under the ground? I have no idea. I know nothing about it. Well, wait a minute. No, almonds grow on trees. Hazelnuts grow on trees. I didn't know that. I knew the 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 almond. Oh, wait, what was the first one you said? Almonds. Oh, I, didn't, on I don't trees. know where those. They, grow. they have like almond groves. But aren't peanuts like the, the aren't peanuts pulled out of the ground by a root? I don't know. I mean, it sounds. I mean, oh Jeff, <laughs> oh Jeffrey, where did the nuts come from? I don't know. This is like, isn't this stuff? Oh, I don't, shouldn't Jeffrey. someone have taught us this, Jeffrey? No, <laughs> no idea. No, Jeffrey. Like if I was like some guys, like you tell, you, do yeah. you know? I, I wouldn't have no idea. But why don't either of us know? That's I don't know. what's frightening me. We're both grown men. Yeah. We've both been drunk on stage, yeah. and we don't know where nuts come from. We never needed to know. That's really the secret. But we needed to know right now. That is true. And we don't. One time I was in Japan, and we were driving. Uh, we were in the shuttle. Oh, talk to me. And the person's, Here we go. person's giving us this thing. And, you know, you're half listening. And you're kind of just soaking it all in. Like, I'm in a foreign country. I must be a better person now that yeah. I've traveled. And I'm looking out uh. the window, and they go, uh, this is all the uh, rubber fields. Oh yeah," I said. "What?" And they go there. This is uh, where they where they grow rubber. Did you know that? Yeah, I had trees. no idea. Rubber comes from trees. I thought it was like melted down something. I don't know what. I still don't understand it really. What's interesting? I think rubber. I think a lot of the rubber trees are in India, or they're 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 in one specific region, and the rubber trees are getting thinned out mm. to the point where. People aren't going to be able to have sex soon. Yeah. Safe sex. I was worried about my tires, but yes, sex. Yeah. Well, the rubber trees with the knot holes are the good ones. <laughs> that is a fact. You can't get those trees pregnant. No. Which is great. And if you start humping too hard, you just bounce right off. Right into it's a no nut big tree. Deal. Yeah. It's nature's, uh, you know. I wonder if rubber trees have nuts on them. <laughs> oh, yeah. They get too... Two like things, two nice things, and a rubber nut. I'd like to, I'd like to find a rubber tree right on the edge of the lagoon with a knot hole. Oh, in that'd it. be a, yeah, that would that's be a, a night good day out. right there. That's a night out there, <laughs> it's fella. A weekend. Um, speaking of trees, bro, talk to me about you know who the big hairy one. Big a bigfoot, foot. yeah. Fuck, let's go. Oh my god. Fuck off. Fuck your baseball. Yeah. F, F you with yeah. your drinking. F you with your news yeah. stories. F Big you foot. with everything else we've talked about. We want to talk about Sasquatch. Let's, let's go, Mo. Yeti, the mountain ghost. Yeah. Yeah, oh. the old uh, Gigantopithecus. I haven't heard mountain ghost. The old uh, Yaren. Is Yaren? Yeah, you know that one? Wasn't he the oh, guy the that Australian. played the flute? <laughs> oh, that's Yanni. Sorry. He's a different guy. He's yeah. a hairy fool, though. Yeah, a big he's hairy probably freak. part Sasquatch. Yeah. Yanni. Or uh, Yowie. That's another one. Wow. There's I, a lot of different... Uh, I heard that one when I stepped on a nail once. <laughs> Yowie. Yeah. Wait, what? Um, I love Bigfoot. Why? I think it's because I grew up in Washington. I've never been able to find the root of my interest in Bigfoot. But Interesting. I grew up in Seattle, so everybody's always telling Bigfoot stories, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And then, two, it's like, don't... Isn't it better to live in a world where we haven't discovered everything? Isn't yeah. that more interesting? It is. Yeah. I agree, a hundred percent. To go, yeah, there's something out there that we don't know. Yeah, that's why I love the ocean too, because yeah. I feel like there's so many undiscovered species in there. But Bigfoot in particular is a toughie, and I what's I think what's getting to me lately, it's sort of Bigfoot and the UFO world. Suddenly, it went from oh yeah, they sort of exist to. Now it's almost like every day there's some guy with a yeah. camera. There's someone caught a UFO. So the tech's so better. We have, Now everybody has cameras. But here's the thing. The tech's so much better, but I have yet to see one Bigfoot footage that isn't out of focus. Oh, my gosh. Can we timestamp this? Harlan Williams is going to regret uh -oh. giving me his cell phone number and what? saying that I don't have any good footage. Because you're just going to get... So many Bigfoot videos from me. You, I, I want them. I've got a ton. And also, it happens so often. Here's what I will say, too, about the lack of digital evidence. So the people that are in the woods right, yeah. that see Bigfoot, th these aren't me and you. Okay. Yeah, who it's, are they? It's not me, you, and Adam Ray in the woods with a, oh, let's put everything on camera. Yeah. Listen, it is loggers, right? 
uh, you know, ranch people, you know, people that are out there who live off the grid, uh, right. you know, the, uh, the, the people who are in the woods all the time, like woods, 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 man, they're not real tech savvy as far as smartphones and all these kinds there. That's why they're off the grid. They're not big uh, Apple yeah. iPhone selfie people. Now, second, if you're seeing something as unusual as an undiscovered animal, that's gigantic. Your instinct isn't like. Let's film this. Your instinct is like, what am I witnessing? And then also, yeah. like, am I in danger? It'd be like if you're like, I was out camping and a bear attacked us. And I'd be like, yeah, right, Harlan. Did you get any footage? He'd be like, I was too busy urinating myself and and trying to figure out what to do. And, and you know, you don't really think, let's get my phone out and film I this. I want to say yes to that, but I got to tell you, every fourth or fifth TikTok is a guy with a mountain lion chasing him and uh, he's yeah. filming it. There's a guy with with grizzly bears yeah. chasing him. There's guys being charged by elephants and lions and rhinos, yeah. and so I'm gonna call bullshit on that. <laughs> well, here's the and I think the 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 instinct now is to holy shit, this is a universal unsolved yeah. mystery. I have before me a chance to. We don't know anything about this species. We don't know that they're violent. Yeah. In fact, what we do seem to know is that they're extremely elusive. Right. And if I pull a nose hair and squeal, they're going to fuck off next week till Thursday. Maybe. So could my, kill you. My, it could, but then y you almost, you almost, people are daredevils. People, yeah. people's tendency is to film stuff, especially nowadays when everyone wants likes. Right. It's like, let me get footage that no one else has. Yeah. So I don't know if well, I buy in your How many story. mountain lions are there? Millions? And, and yeah. you know, they, so, like, that's way more common, and you still don't see a lot of those videos. Right, right. Yeah, Bigfoot is happening very rarely. But to my point, Bigfoot is the golden goose yeah. of all That's the capture. money shot. That's the money that's shot. That's like <laughs> catching. That's like you see the Loch Ness monster rise yeah. up out of Lake Loch Ness in yeah. northern Scotland, and you go... Oh no, I'm out of here. As opposed to going, film yeah. it, back up, back up, back yeah. up. Back, you know, like, or I gotta be honest. If I saw Bigfoot, what I perceive to be a Bigfoot, I would I, love for you to see Bigfoot. I want to see one. If I saw a Bigfoot and and I was fairly certain it wasn't a bear, yeah, I would probably run at it. Really, I would probably run at it and get definitive, finalized proof. Yeah. And deal with what's it gonna do? We don't know if they're if they're carnivores. We yeah. don't know if they're vegetarian. So if it's a vegetarian, what does it do? Pick me up and throw me into the lettuce? Yeah, you go. You know, if it's Pussy. a if it's a carnivore, I don't think we've ever heard of, of a missing person that's been consumed by a bigfoot. We don't know. You can't. We don't know. People are missing, missing people. people. We don't know why they're missing. Yeah. But you gotta figure if you're a giant ape-like creature. Yeah. With ambidextrous fingers yeah. and articulating hands, it's killing why not just walk into someone's house and have a snack? They do that. They break in. Here's the thing. This is another thing that happens with skeptics, you know? Okay. You say, I'm not, no, don't know if I'm a skeptic or I'm just a realist because I want them to exist. Yeah. Well, so here's what people do. They go, this footage is terrible. Yeah. yeah. This footage is, is, a, is a joke. Yeah. So then you give them good footage. Someone has good footage and they go, this has to be fake. Too good. This is, uh, there's no way that's, so it's yeah. literally nobody. You can't win. Yeah, because there are really good ones, and people go, that can't be real. And you're like, why? What would it take for this to be proved? They'd be like, well, I don't know. I guess it'd have to be on the news or something. But they're really good ones often at like a distance, or they're really good ones where yeah. it just sticks an eye out from yeah. behind a tree for a third of a second, like. <laughs> Why isn't there a really good one of some guy just literally chasing like there's a police a, there's a, like, oh, and the, the things like looking back? Holy fuck! I'm gonna show you some like that. I got I got a lot like that. Really? Yeah, so real you're convinced one. beyond the shadow of a yeah, doubt? Yeah, I would bet every penny on it. Okay. Yeah. When also I think they live in the caves. I also think they live in the woods. There's so much woods. If you see how much woods there are, you go, oh, some could be in there. Like, it's pretty crazy. I how know the woods. I used to work in the woods. So much yeah. territory. You know, like... Oh, it's just fly over the country. Yeah. And you go, that's a lot. Especially in the Pacific Northwest or California. It's yeah, endless. and you just go, I could I could see... We have, we have humans we haven't discovered yet. 
Like, there's actual humanoids that they just found, like, in the last, like, decade. Where uh, were they? At Walmart? Where? No, they were just in an area of the woods uh, in some foreign country that they flew over, and they're like, are those red people down oh, there? Oh, like in the Amazon. Yeah, and now that airspace is blocked off. We can't fly. We Still no one has made right. contact with these people. And it's because... They don't want to disrupt. They don't want to disrupt ecosystem. whatever they got going on. Yeah. You know, I don't know how that becomes a law or I whatever. I think I also read that they were cannibals too. I don't. I don't know if that's real or not, but I would like to think it is. Yeah, because nothing pains me more to see proud indigenous tribes, yeah. and seven of them are in like falcon feathers and berry war paint. And the fifth, you know, the ninth one, Ed's got an Adidas shirt on. Yeah, you like don't want just, that. just, he crushes he me. Goes, Who's this? Oh, he's, oh, he loves America. Yeah, he, he sneaks out at night. You know, he's got the Crocs. Where'd you get that? Yeah, yellow Crocs, <laughs> Hooters shorts, and, uh, and an Adidas this shirt. This means pray to the moon god. Yeah. You're like, all right, I guess he's still in our religion, I guess, at oh, least. dude. <laughs> all right, but what if I broke it down okay. and got a little more technical? Would that okay. irritate you? Not at all. Okay, let's talk about thermal imaging. Okay, we have it. Heat cameras. Yep. So how is it if they kind of have an idea of where these critters roam? Yeah. If they can follow people running through a field coming over the border at night with thermal cameras off of helicopters, why can't they detect a oversized primate? We have them. You do. There's thermal imaging recordings of Bigfoots all over the Pacific Northwest. And why don't they trail them to their dwelling? Um, that's a good question. Like they can't just run I into invisible. I think that the people land. that are doing aren't like Marine Corps guys. You know, they're they're just kind of like, you know, more more or less crazy people like me and my dad with who a helicopter. Like, no, they don't have that. They don't. They don't have all these things. In fact, they're all stupid too. They're like, we don't want to shoot one. It's like, why not kill one? Just kill one to show. This is America. Of course, they want to yeah, shoot one. I want to shoot one. But these all these Bigfoot areas are all, all these mm. groups are going. No, we. It's it's a part of the. the you're like no, just kill one so that people will believe us. But like there is like a ton of footage of them, and then people go, that's probably just people. You're like, yeah, there's eight foot people that are just hiding in the woods you know like it's they have the thermal imaging okay. also you know that with science uh, a gigantopithecus is was a a bipedal hominid that nat- science fully recognizes was an upright ape okay. that walked around in neanderthal ape. yeah in no not neanderthal but it was after and it was in asia and they have bones of it right huh. and everybody any anybody in natural Science Museum will go, yeah, the Gigantopithecus. Yeah, that's uh, actually it was called Gigan- Gigantopithecus Blackie is what it was called. A little insensitive nowadays, you know. Can't be saying Gigantopithecus Blackie. There's a big joke there, but we're going to leave it. <laughs> we're going to leave it alone. So anyways, uh, we know that that was real. Yeah. And, th- and when those were roaming around, yeah. um, the Asian bridge was connected to America. Right, so, right. My best guess, and it's not mine really, it's just something I read, is that they probably migrated over here in the Pacific Northwest in these areas. And anything that we're seeing, any remnant of, of, a, of, a, of a Gigantopithecus is some sort of weird kind of evolution of, of this from California, Oregon, Washington, okay. in, in the Americas, from that. That's, that's my best guess. But we have to conclude if yeah. there's a Bigfoot plural Bigfoot. A lot of them. That there's mating going on. Yep. There's reproducing going yes. on. And when you create creatures, well, the old ones die on the end. Nobody's ever found a corpse. Right. Well, a, a, no hunter, no lumberjack, yeah. no hiker, no... You'd think there'd be one that collapsed somewhere, one that died somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Like in all these years, and yeah. let's be honest, there's a lot of woods, but a lot of these woods have been scoured quite intensively. Right. There's no hair that's ever produced DNA. There's tons of hair that have produced DNA. Of a Bigfoot. Yep. But the problem is you have to go to the library of DNA, which is things that are categorically in the library of DNA. So they have tons of hair that they've found after sightings and stuff, and then they go, this is some sort of ape. We don't know what it is. I mean, I'll show you. Conclusively I'll show you. defined as ape hair. Ape hair of an unknown. They don't have a code to match it to because Bigfoot isn't a recognized species. But they have the hair. We what have about the droppings? Calls. 
The, uh, they like have everything droppings. has to yep. poo. They have dermal ridges. Like they have like actual casting footprints that have fingerprints in the thing. Huh. So what I'll say is the, um, I think the bone question is a good question. But like ask any hunter how many times they've stumbled upon a dead bear or dead bear bones or anything. What happens is everything gets kind of eaten up and it kind of all like nature does that. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so... Out of the millions of animals that die every year, yeah. you don't you're not just walking around bones in the woods. No. It kind of is all kind of turned up and and so if we're talking about a creature that's as rare as as these apes. But has a tibia this high. <laughs> yeah, I think that's maybe, true. you know, I don't think a chipmunk's running off with that one. <laughs> By the way, a lot of these bones get consumed by the rodents, the, yeah. the porcupines and the rabbits, because they're filled with calcium. Yeah. That's why you don't find um deer antlers and moose antlers all over the place yeah. because they get they actually get eaten by all these um the little other, large rodents the other things and i also yeah. think that like eat i'm not a big outdoorsman i love okay. the outdoors but i'm i wouldn't say i'm like very educated about it okay so i would say like if i was to be camping or hiking or whatever going through the woods and i saw like some bones i probably wouldn't think much about it would you right would you think to like inspect the bones and Again, see what the bones if, are if the fibula was yeah. you know nine inches taller than me as a person i'd be like okay either a brontosaurus laid down here or we got us a, a yeti or a whoopee <laughs> what a whoopee yeah, what'd no. you say a, a yahoo oh a, you a urine no, you said... A yowie is in Australia. A yowie. Yeah, the yowies. Oh, that, there's one in Australia, yeah, too? Yeah. Well, that's the problem with this thing, too. Is like It might huh. be some sort of paranormal thing, too, because, I mean, I don't believe that. I like to think it's, you know, yeah. blood and bones is what I like to think. I do, too. By the way, I'm not... I want it to be real. Yeah. I'm with you, bro. Yeah. I'm a Bigfoot bro. There's some real like weird I'm, stuff in every culture. I want it to be real, but I the logic in me goes, hmm... You yeah. know, and I, and I fight it because, you know, I did used to work in the bush. I was I was a forest ranger, a lumberjack. Really? I've I've been in very remote. Nothing places. weird when you're out there. Never saw anything like that. Now, again, you didn't know, hear stuff. No, I never never heard anything crazy like that. But but that again, I, I doesn't say it, I don't believe yeah. it. I, I came across moose, bear, every, everything. You know. Yeah. Okay. Here's the next question. Yeah. When you were out in the woods working and stuff, uh, how much of your time were you in the woods when it was dark, like when the sun went down? Uh, quite a bit. It's it really? sounds bizarre, but I sort of became obsessed, and I'm surprised I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. But I became obsessed with being fearless. And I would go and walk into the forest, not only in the forest, but then I lived in, in the Rocky Mountains for a spell. Yeah. And I would go out at night without a flashlight, challenging myself and sort of, you know how in Africa young men are, you know, th their passage to manhood is to go out and slay yeah. a lion or something? Yeah. So I sort of put upon myself this sort of ritualistic thing to prove my manliness as I was kind of going through, you know, my early 20s and stuff. And I would press myself and I would literally go on these long, long, long hikes At in night. the dark in grizzly bear country mountain yeah, line. It's in, super dangerous what you're talking about. And this was in Banff, Canada, where yeah. it's just wild. It's a it's a national bear park. Bear country, so, yeah. So I still, it's only looking back where I go, what an idiot. When I was doing it, it was exhilarating. Worked and out, I though. Felt it worked out, but here's what I still think about it this day, and, and I go to myself, how many pairs of eyes were watching me? Oh, yeah. That I didn't even know about. How many snakes? How many I mean, mountain lions did I walk past? And I'm thinking I'm this like <laughs> courageous night walker. There's food. And seven feet away, because these, a lot of these predators, they can kill you, but they're frightened by humanoid shapes. Yeah. And they were, who knows if I, I walked right oh, by. Yeah. So, but. Well, they, so that defeats my argument. Most people, when they're in the woods, the sun goes down, you, you go to sleep. I mean, you might you right. make a fire, you might be up for a little while, but for the most part, when the sun's down, you don't dink around for the reasons that every there's a lot of nocturnal creatures. Yeah. They do their little prowling at night. The reason bears come up to people's tents at night is because that's when bears wake yeah. up, they go out at night. So most people, I use the argument, I say, well, you weren't out and about right, it. Right. Not, you were, which well, is you know, wild. Another reason for it, too, is if you look it up, you know, you think about an owl and the intensity of their night vision. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I looked it up because it was of interest to me. And when humans, and you should try this as an experiment, when you get out into the darkness where there's no ambient light, yeah, humans' night vision, it's, it's marginally lower than an owl's, but it's not as much not as, as, bad they, as, as research think. says. We, and that's what I did. I, I loved it. You, you give your eyes about 25, 30 minutes, and yes, everything's black, but you, your, your vision becomes like kind of cool. That's interesting. Especially if there's a moon out, obviously. Sure. And if it's a full moon, it, you'd be amazed how much you can see. It's so a cool it was, little test you put your eyes it, through. It really was. Like, yeah. I, I was really into it and, and only looking back. Like it, Sometimes I think about it yeah. because it was, it was very extreme. And I was way off the grid. I didn't tell anyone I was doing it. Oh, I'd hike around a mountain. I'd go down by the river where wildlife will always congregate where there's water yeah. because they need it. And then I'd go all, I'd walk around the whole outside of this town. And it was, I look back now. And one night I'll tell also you. Also running into people. Yeah. Like they, that's one thing nobody thinks about too. Or if they do, not many people talk about it. Like yeah. r- people that are out in the woods. Yeah. Th- there's a reason they're out there. That's true. People you, are probably the most scary oh, thing. You, yeah. you go, what is this guy out here for? Yeah. You know, like, like you yeah. think, like, what is he running from? This guy's yeah. just up in the woods by, yeah. you know, off the grid. Yeah, yeah it's, it's scary. weird. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had that where you've been somewhere really isolated yeah. and all of a sudden there was... A guy okay. with a knife, and he's just like, how's really? it going? And you're like, yeah, it was in Denver somewhere. Or like, Ooh. it was in Colorado. Sorry, not Denver. And um, there's a comic that's like, dude, we'll take you out. Like, I got some buddies who really like to go off the grid. All these people always reach out to me because I'm such a Bigfoot guy. Yeah. And they're like, we'll take you to some areas, man. We've never seen anything, but if you want to be out in the... And he, there's just a guy with a knife, and he looked insane. And we were just kind of like, hey. And then he's like, you know, and then walked by us. And then my buddy turns to me and goes, that's... That's the stuff you you want to watch yeah. out for. Luckily, it was like six of us, so we were. He this was just out in the forest yeah. or at the edge of a trail in or? the forest. Uh, we were probably forty minutes in, but like we we were dressed. We you know you can look at me and know this guy doesn't go to the woods. He doesn't okay, live yeah. in the woods. Yeah. Whereas this guy, long beard, yeah, yeah. dirty, you know, his boots yeah. got mud all in. And the, this guy's out there. This guy's wow. you know he's almost a like a troll. Yeah, yeah, our forty minutes in is like the closest he came to right, the edge. Right. You know, that guy's just living. He was out just there. protecting his perimeter. Yeah, and here and comes a guy in a Louis Vuitton jacket, and he's yeah. like, "I'm gonna skin skin you up good." <laughs> or he looked at us the opposite. He goes, "These guys are pussies. I'm not gonna yeah. mess with. I'm they're harmless to me. Like I'm not even yeah, yeah. bothered by them. We're like a little sparrow." And did you feel threatened by the the, the the fact that he had a weapon? No, I think that the the knife out there is probably just an everyday thing right. for him. Was he wielding the knife or was yeah. it in a sheath? Or no, he had it out. He had it out. Yeah. Mm, that's suspect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I was just going, maybe he needed the knife for... Yeah, like I could see it if he was like skinning like a kill or something, but he just was standing by a cedar tree with his knife out. And he was like, walking. Howdy, yeah, boys. he was just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> like, like an old cop. Yeah. yeah. Kind of How are you doing there, Peanut? Come on over here. Let me scalp you there. <laughs> Funny seeing you boys here. Yeah. Um, Weird. <laughs> you know, curly mustache. Welcome to Denver, yeah. boys. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. Uh. And my memories, I can't remember like how he was holding it even, but he was just walking along the thing, and we were like, that's scary. Luckily, we outnumbered him, which is a predator thing, by the way. Yeah. That, like... Uh, you know, like if a bear sees like four people, the bear will think this is just something I've read again, so it could okay. be wrong. Um, but like it was like a bear will see it numbers. The bear will go, oh, four. It's just me, one bear. So it won't necessarily try to have a conflict, which is crazy because a bear could kill four people super easy. Yeah. But in its brain, it goes, I'm outnumbered, which is a weird thing. So maybe that's what this guy with a knife thought. Yeah, there was a scenario, one of the places I worked, sadly, where uh, a group of boys, three boys, went fishing in the spring. Yeah, the legume. And and on Legume Bay. (laughs) And they were dumb enough to put their fish, they were, I think they're catching like small brook trout, put them in their pockets of their Uh vest. It was spring, so it was still a little nippy in the air. A black bear which isn't commonly known to attack humans. But it's a plate. The kid's basically a plate for them at this point. Killed all three of them. Oh, a yeah, black that's bear. tough. So the numbers thing, I don't know. But I, th- I think it's all about timing. I think it's about yeah. where you are, 
how, what's in the bear's stomach? You know, there's that idiot that did that that documentary, yes. Grizzly Man, yeah. and he acted like this big like bear. And and what he didn't realize, or maybe he probably did, is these bears were were feeding during the salmon run, where they had so much food. A guy standing twenty feet away was was no of no interest yeah. because it and and but then one day just that one day where a bear went you know what I've had enough salmon but that yeah. looks good I'm also tired of this guy running around yeah. making videos yeah. with us he's showing us off he's showing us off to his girlfriend like we're his buddy yeah. like you know like you're done it's yeah. really stupid that movie yeah. pissed me off actually yeah there was one good part they had a song that was like. Hoo-dip, hoo-dip, hoo. You know that song? It sounds like the guy in the woods with the <laughs> knife. Was he was he in on it? It was like a song hoo-dip, hoo-dip, where he, that's when the helicopter like lands and then there's like you got old Geronimo, you got old talking bull. Hoo-dip, hoo-dip. I just remember being like, what is this song? Wow, I like that song. I like it. Yeah, but uh, the Lost that, Beatles. That guy was annoying. Well, you know what? This is going to sound really morbid, but in that documentary, they had footage apparently because he filmed everything yeah. of the mauling. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't keep that in. Well, what they did is the director said it was so sort of graphic and terrifying, so he all the most he would do was play the audio. Oh, yeah, I heard the audio. But I got to say, if you're going to make a documentary, if we can watch JFK get a bullet, yeah. a couple of bullets through the head, if we yeah. can watch... You know, people getting nuked and people, you know, old documentaries of, of the Holocaust where they're, they're, they're you know, yeah. bulldozing bodies into a yeah. pit. You know what? I, I feel like... Old he's Hitchcock sort of, footage. Yeah, right? Yeah. I feel like he sort of cheated us out. Not that I want to see a human being getting mauled, but don't take us on this journey all the way and at the last minute go... Hey, it's too what, graphic. It, yeah, we can't show you. It's like, you know what? Also, I want to see that guy get mauled. He annoyed yeah. me the whole movie. I th- I think what annoys me is it's is people's it, it's at the end their ability to feel like they blend in to nature with these giant creatures yeah. to me is disrespectful to nature. I agree. And when you kind of placate a wild grizzly bear, one of the top you know <laughs> carnivore predators uh, on the planet, yeah. I think the polar bear is the biggest one. And then you got the Kodiak bear, you got the grizzly bear, you got the black bear. And when you're treating them like, like you know. Disney ride. Yeah, like yeah. Disneyland or, or, or like daycare center like toys. It, you, you, you know, he was giving them names yeah. and talking to them, you know, and, you know, doing that puppy talk. Oh, how's my little bumblebee yeah. today? And it's like, I'll dude, kill you. Wait one yeah. week. Yeah. 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 Bring your girlfriend out here, too. I'm going to eat yeah. both of you. Yeah. The salmon run ends on Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah. Just keep talking keep, there. Keep being cute. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to keep Cutesy. taunting me. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, the natives in the documentary were, like, so great. Because even they hated that guy. Yeah. These nice, like, this nice, you know, indigenous people who were like, he's not doing them a service. No. If anything, let's say the bears do like him, which yeah. is quite a reach. But let's yeah. just pretend the bears like this guy. Yeah. Now you're teaching the bears, oh, people are friendly. Yeah. You can go walk up to people. Yeah. And then they'll get shot. Like, you're, yeah. you're not helping the bears, no. and you're not respecting nature. Well, you're invading their territory yeah. as well. They they have rituals. They have things that they do. All that now suddenly here's this guy. Yeah. yeah. It, it, people could learn a lot from that, too, because, you know, like, it's a human kind of thing to want to be like, oh, I'm special. Yeah. I can talk. I can hang out with bears. I have this, uh, this connection with nature that you don't. People do that. All the time they'll bring a lion yeah. into their house yeah they'll raise a lion cub in the you know in their in their kitchen and the living room and yeah. like it's it's very foolish to be that reckless with with wildlife and nature and think that that's not gonna have a it's like i call it the Siegfried and roy syndrome because look what happened to yeah. roy or zygmunt or whatever yeah. like eventually we love our lions our t- and then one day one bit yeah. him through the neck gone look reminds at- everyone he's a lion <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And there was that famous documentary from the the early 70s or late 60s called Born Free with Elsa the Lion. It was very famous at the time about a a white couple who lived in Africa and they adopted Elsa the Lion because she was abandoned or something happened. Yeah. And so they, they raised her and they tried to reintroduce her into the wild and I think they successfully did and nice. then cut to... You know, I think about 12 years or 10 years after the movie had kind of faded away, 
the woman was mauled to death by lions. You oh, know, wow. so it's like you, you, you can't. Yeah, you can't yeah. mess with that that predatory code that's embedded in them, you know. Yeah, and also people like that. People love that um, natural karma, or not, I don't even know what it'd be called natural karma. Yeah, like when we hear that that guy got ate by a bear at the end, we go, "Yeah, yeah, I like that because that yeah. makes total sense." This yeah. guy's a Fruit Loop. Well, it sort of reminds you of the natural order. Yeah, and that's something in us goes, "Yep, yeah." And I'll say this, I feel bad that a human died. I think he was reckless. I think he was naive, thinking he somehow had this special connection with these giant, carnivorous, like, flesh-eating animals. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you don't want to see someone die, but it, it's it's like, you're right. It's sort of like it was just a click, right. a ticking clock. Right. It so makes total sad. sense. I, I But I uh, it's interesting that that footage exists somewhere. Yeah, I, you know, I was a bit suspicious of whether it did or not, and I wondered if the filmmaker was being dramatic and going, oh, I've got the footage, but right. I'm not going to show it just to, like, kind of amp it up. But I, I don't know. And, and yeah, again, you don't want to see someone eaten or mauled by a bear, but you even could have showed part of it. And, you know, if he's, if he's literally ripping his eyes yeah. out, it's okay, maybe Gratuitous. stop it there. Yeah. But don't take me on a two-hour documentary <laughs> and and then at the climax, it's, it's like doing a two-hour documentary on the JFK assassination, yes. and just as the cars, is, just as he's about to be hit, you go, well, we're not going to show Also, you. who's to decide what I can see? In exactly. That? So like, well, well, let me handle what, not put a little warning, hey, this, yeah. is, this is some graphic part here. But like, but like, we're grown-ups, you know, yeah. they, they put terrible stuff. I watched all the footage on the, basically on the dark web, uh, all the footage I could find from being uploaded of, uh, of the conflict in Palestine and like all the, oh. you know, there's crazy stuff on there. You saw some of those murders? Oh yeah, there's tons of stuff at bombings and just them like taking oh. babies and I mean, cause you know, I have, um, I don't know what it's, I don't know what, if there's like a term for it or not, but like, I need to see that for me to get riled up. I can't just yeah. read words, you know, 300 men were bombed. I, I just read it and I go, yeah. oh, 300 men were bombed. I've read so much stuff about war and stuff mm. that, but when I see it, then it makes me feel like, uh, oh yeah, like this is happening. It's like, this, real. Hits yeah, it's home. terrible. It's like when you hear that a pl an athlete hits his hits his spouse or something, and you go, oh, he's going to miss the season because he got suspended for hitting his spouse. Right. But when you see footage yeah. from TMZ of, like, of the football player on an elevator punching, you go, get him out. Something should be done. Like, yeah. he should never play again. So for me, I need that. Do you that worry extra. about that type of extreme imagery, though, like getting implanted in your psyche and it... it yeah. Because I remember I started to watch back years ago when they posted the beheadings, the ISIS beheadings. Oh, yeah. And there were some up on the internet. There's a, yeah, I started them. to watch one, and I went, no way. <laughs> I, I, you know, have you ever heard that term, you can't unsee something? Yes. Does that ever I think it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have terrifying dreams. And, wow. Uh, but I think it's worth it. And it's, it I don't even know if this was is along the same lines, but like... Um, you know, when they talk about, like, Jesus being crucified. Right. Like, it's like, we just say it like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. Like, like nails through your hands and you're hung up. So, like, you, you have to br pull your body up so you can breathe just to collapse. Like, and the fatigue of that and being... St so, I like, think, like... But here's the real quick. Did they even have nails back then? <laughs> oh, yeah. They definitely had nails. Big ones. They did? Oh, for sure. Tools predate that by thousands of years. Okay. But uh, but what I was going to say is like like your breakfast, right? You might see eggs. Yeah. And you might see like a cute little slice of ham that you put something on. But like a pig died for that. Yeah, you know, like violently. A, yeah. yeah, and so like it's, it's just kind of good to know of the yeah. sacrifice that was made for your breakfast or the sacrifice that was made for, you know, your life or whatever. Does it wear on you though? Like it, does it diminish your faith? Does it div diminish your belief in civility and mankind when you, let's say you watch a series of, let's just say the Israeli thing that happened. Yeah. If, if you watch 10, 20, 30 videos, does it at some point knock down your belief in the goodness of mankind does it does it hurt you psychologically i think that there's a lot of that i will yeah. admit that that it does do that however it reminds me what i'm capable of and How do that's you mean? that i could that we could be like that 
the animalistic side. Of, we could be like yeah, that. You're right. Dude, oh, that yeah. like if it Quite came easily. down to it, yeah. survival, like yeah. history, you know, like. And so Savagery. I like to remind myself like, oh, man, like let's not let it. Let's love each other. Let's not get to this point. Okay. Let's talk about some things instead of just slaughtering or sending, yeah. bo- you know, like. So I think it, it, with all those negatives, that yes, 100%. Because it does. It makes you go, who would do this? But like yeah. I'm not having those thoughts if I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I I like to trigger those kind of thoughts so I can go, yeah, man, like, I don't, this is crazy. Also makes me feel very lucky, you know? Yeah. I don't ever wake up, you know, it's a norm joke, but I never wake up and go, ah, ah, the Middle East, you know, like, I like, we we got a pretty cushy life, you know? And I like to remind myself that how blessed we are over here. I feel safe. Well, interestingly enough, too, I think seeing that graphic stuff is... It, it, it's part of a reminder of who we are. You yeah. know, we're, we're not just people that go to the cheesecake factory and have little families and put it like, you know, I remember I heard it put once we're, we're extremely violent and mm-hmm. we contain it. It's amazing. You don't see more violence, yeah. tribal violence. And, 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 you know, someone said this once and it's always stuck with me. It's like, if we weren't as violent as we are, Tigers and lions would be the dominant species. Yeah. Like, to, to think of what a lion and a tiger does to whatever it wants. Yep. Because a lion and a tiger will take down a human. Yeah. The fact that we have them quelled, it, what's that say about us? Yeah. And, and so it's uh, it's very interesting. Wow. And it's, not a, and it's not even like intelligence. We love to pat ourselves on the back about intelligence, like as humans. Right. But it's not. It's It's survival. Yeah. Like, look at roaches. Roaches aren't smart, but they've been around forever because they can yeah. survive. Yeah. And, like, we find a way. Like, you know, like, we didn't look yeah. at bears and just give up and go, yeah. there they win. Yeah. No, we built things and we trapped them. And, yeah. and then after trap them, we go, we make guns and shoot them. Like, like we, we found a way to survive. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting is we, we at least found that line where we go, oh, wait, if we keep going, we eradicate them. Yeah. And we did that with a lot of species. But let's face it, if we wanted to, by you know the end of this year, humans could easily take out every elephant that exists on the planet. Apex predators. Yeah. Yep. But we don't, which is one saving grace. Yeah. But. The, yeah. Well, because what would it do, you know? Well, there'd be a lot less, lot less, lot, lot less fatties wandering around. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Always fucks up a joke when you stutter it eight <laughs> no, times. No, it's still funny. It was, it was really was. good. Yeah. Um, what was the what was the joke you used to have about you know the vegetarians it used to oh. about how animals are eating oh. each other? Oh yeah, I such used a to, good argument. Yeah, I used to see my buddy. My buddy was a vegetarian. He said I should I should stop. <laughs> Yeah, if I forget it. It's such yeah, a good joke. Yeah, it's an and also, the, the, I love that argument. It's like everyone's like, we shouldn't eat meat. It's like, animals are eating the meat. They're, they're not all. Yeah, right. Yeah, they, they, they do what they want. Oh, yeah. What was the joke? My buddy Larry used to say, you should be a vegetarian <laughs> like me. You'll you'll live a lot longer and you'll all forget it. Yeah, you start eating him. I can't remember <laughs> it. You start eating him, I think, or uh, something. After the food is gone, we're coming for you, buddy. Yeah, damn. <laughs> Larry, not a real guy. There's zero yeah, chance. No Larry. There's zero chance there was a real Larry. Um, l- two last questions. One, if you did, if you ran into a Bigfoot yeah. in the woods, uh, knowing you might have the chance to immortalize it yeah. with your kid, would you run or would you pursue it? How, how would you treat a hands-on encounter with a Bigfoot? So I, yeah, I know me real good. Yeah. I am freeze. You know, they say fight or flight and there's freeze. There's fight, flight, freeze. I'm freeze. Right. There was a shooting at the comedy store and everyone, it was just like a movie. Guys go pop, pop, pop. And then all the people, everyone in the comics and audience members are like on the patio. They go, ah, they all made the sound you would hear. It was perfectly like a movie. And you'd have thought I was cool as a cucumber. You'd be like, who's that guy? If there was a video of it, they'd be like, who's that guy that doesn't even care? I looked over with my cigar, like I was like, mm, someone's shooting. But it wasn't that I was cool. I was petrified, petrified. and had no idea what to do. It looked like I was not bothered. Right. Um, so my guess is that if I saw a Bigfoot, which is like I've been obsessing about every day in my whole life, um, I would be so scared that I don't know if I'd be able to film. I don't, I'm pretty sure I would, you know, there would, 
poop myself. Whatever naturally happens when you're that terrified. Can I plant a seed inside yeah. you in case this does happen? Yeah. Because they're an anomaly. We don't know what they are. We yeah. don't know what their aptitude is. We don't know if they're violent, if they're carnivores, if they're vegetarians. Cut to the silverback mountain gorilla. Oh, yeah. An imposing force, yeah. to say the least. 500 pounds. They look like they could smash down the Empire State Building. Yeah. I've... That happened once. I saw that movie. Oh, the Kong, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he, was the that beard. really happened. Yeah, that really happened. <laughs> but I did the trek. I went into um, Rwanda. I, okay. I trekked up the hill with the, and found the silverback gorillas. Yeah. And, and not just my journey, but you can see it. They're very docile, peaceful creatures. They don't... But they've got canine teeth that are this long. Yeah, they they've got fangs. To. They've got muscles bigger than the Incredible Hulk. And yet... They're so passive. Yeah. So what I would say to you, considering Bigfoot sounds like it's a large ape yeah. like like creature, maybe you have assumed that it's violent yeah. and dangerous. Whereas what about you adopting the perception that maybe this creature is gentle and the reason we haven't seen it because it's very reserved yeah. and trepidatious about humans. So what about taking the approach instead of freezing? I have a chance to verify this strange creature. Yeah. I don't you've you've made this assumption that it's going to be a violent outcome. I made the assumption that it can defend itself. But if you're so, not attacking like, if it, if it can if it can presume me not as a threat, yeah. right? Like what if I stumble upon the female and it's and it's babies or something? Or maybe the female and its babies is like 20 feet away I can't even see them, but he's gone. You know, this is near my pod of family here. Like, so, like, I guess it would need to see me not as a threat. But, right. yeah, me, the, the silverbacks, they'll bluff charge. You know, they do all these oh, yeah, things because they don't want to have a conflict. I had know. one run at me, the biggest one on the mountain. Docu they document all of them. It was almost 500 pounds. Charged at me this close and mocked, did a mock charge. My heart stopped. I bet. It was unreal. Wait, so I'm not one of these guys who films everything and thinks everything should be video blogged and all that, but, like, is there any footage of you with these Yeah, out there? I had the camera hanging down when it came at me because before it came at me, the, the our guide, he <laughs> yeah. last thing I heard, he goes, he's charging, <laughs> yeah. and he came right at me, and I have, like, a somewhere I have oh, footage of amazing. it. that's amazing. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, this was... This was probably 12 years ago, maybe. That's awesome. 13 years what ago. What a cool experience. It was wild. But but my point is that maybe there's a bigger picture here yeah. where you're, you have to start to look at yourself as a legacy guy who's solving a lifelong mystery that goes down in the history books. I'm trying to, find, I'm trying to make a show called Killing Sasquatch. Killing. I'm not kidding. So you would you would rather kill it? I want to kill one. Yeah, <laughs> I want it dead, dude. Just so people won't think I'm crazy. Right. If we can get just one, just one has right. to make a sacrifice, so we can go. Look, everyone called us stupid. You know the so I'm gonna guess the number. I know I'm somewhere in the wheelhouse. That like, the gorillas weren't even discovered until like the the 1890s or something. Everyone thought it was a myth till then. Right. Uh, the panda bears. I think it was like 1930 or 1940 or something. People like like people in China were going, I see these bears. You know, they're white and black. Yeah. People go, there's no white and black bears. Right, right, right. So like I imagine 100 years from now, people might listen to this and go, can you believe these two? They're talking about Bigfoot. Like it's hmm. crazy. Yeah. I really think that's going to be the future is that they're not only just Bigfoots, a lot of things are going to come to fruition where we're going to be like, oh, there's tiny people. Or there's like, yeah. uh, you know, there's going to be, I think Bigfoot will just be one of those things. We'll look back and go, of course, Bigfoot's real. They have him at the zoo or they have, you know. But you want the legacy of the guy like Sir Edmund Hillary, who will forever be known as the guy who crested Everest. The first, yeah. supposedly the first guy. I probably think some of the Sherpas did it yeah. ahead of him. And they're him, going, what's the big? He got credited with it, right? Yeah. Do you want to be remembered as the guy that killed the elusive Man, that Bigfoot? Is tough. Or do you want to be the guy that you got definitive proof, you chase it, you find it, it was there, you've got this really credible footage, there's hair there, there's footprints, yeah. you're unseen, versus 
you go down in the history books as the guy. Because look at the. That, I think I'd have to kill it. You'd have to just because we get got that the bigfoots, we got the hair, we have the footage, we have all okay. that stuff, and nobody cares. In fact, most people don't even know of its uh, evidence. So I think you got to kill one. Sadly, I think it's not you got. I think someone really I'm wants to one. shoot one. I'm killing one. Where would you shoot it? Got to shoot it. Oh, I don't want to shoot in the head though. You don't want to mess up that skull. Yeah, and also people are gonna say, "What did it look like?" I go, "I don't know." I blasted its face off. The JFK of the North. I'm like, "Oh, that's just some mutant bear. You didn't really kill it." You know, they'll they'll mess. So I got to shoot it in the chest, mm. which is tough. Something about, that big. What about shoot it in the foot? It's Bigfoot. <laughs> he can't get away. He blow off away. both of his feet. His fucking feet are so big. That seems obvious to me. <laughs> He's dragging himself yeah. like a mermaid. He can't go anywhere once you shoot them big old feet out from <laughs> under a boat. That is the boy. most humane. You're a good man. You'd make a good police officer, Harlan. See? Yeah, shoot that him. way you get shoot to him shoot them, and we get to keep them. <laughs> we need more officers like you. Change them to shot foot. Dude, that's not a Bigfoot. Look, he's got no feet. Yeah. This guy just shot a weird bear. Everything's going to come back to bear. bear. That's all they'll do. All right, buddy. Our final segment. This has been a great conversation. Thanks, Thank man. you. I love having. I love, I love that. talking to you. That's great. Um, speaking of feet, I'd like to see a Bigfoot in these Dutch clogs. Oh, man. You'd have to get a lot bigger than that for a Bigfoot. Is there a Dutch Bigfoot? You said they're uh, all over the world. Is, I, there, is there a Nutella foot anywhere? Or? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. A Bigfoot, me, a Deutschland Bigfoot. Yeah. A Deutsch, a German Bigfoot. Is he wearing clogs? Yeah. yeah, I mean, when in... Here he comes. When in Deutschland. Yeah, you just hear him. He's oh. a noisy yeah. uh, hominid. Bigfoot hominid. <laughs> Right. That, that could be the new one. A G L G B Q hominid yeah. plus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we go. found it. He's part of the community. Don't make jokes. Dude, we found it, right? It was <laughs> like at the beginning we were trying to fit. We just added the because <laughs> hominids. They're living things. Yeah, they they're deserve. sweethearts. So words from a wooden shoe, buddy. You reach in here. Okay. A word. Pick one out. See if it elicits a memory, a story from your life, from someone you mm. knew, somewhere on your journey. Just whatever first comes to my head. Yeah, whatever, okay. based on the word you Actually, pull, and grind. see if it, uh, right. if it triggers anything. The sexiest thing to me. Oh. Sexiest thing to you. I think we it know it's shooting a Yeti, but keep No, going. no. The sexiest thing's tits. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot tits yeah, or regular yeah. tits? Oh, yeah, you know, uh, the famous Bigfoot. Yeah, big tits? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Patty, because they, they named it after um, Patterson Gimlin footage, which was the, oh, the, yeah. the most famous video. Right, but didn't he admit on his deathbed that he, no. that he faked it? No. I think there's actual there's tons footage of, of him on his deathbed admitting it was a fraud. No, there's tons of people that have tried to say it's fake. They make tons of money off just suing people that have tried to claim those kind of things uh but it had boobs did it man, yeah they're man like boobs? why would they make no it's a woman they made it like a female bigfoot oh really and they were like why would they add breasts to that costume that would have cost tons of money back then but anyways sexiest so, thing to yeah. me mm. that's tough this is gonna sound it's not funny at all it's just oh. i think the sexiest thing to me is kindness oh. like yeah just like a nice lady wow that yeah. is, i agree that is sexy that's way better because there's a lot of new kind of the new yeah. modern woman is like giving you shit or nagging you or being like, what's with your shirt? Like, that's kind of a, a cool, funny way that women right. like to behave. So I'm not knocking that. But I am saying, like, I don't want to be with a woman like that. I like when a woman's just kind, yeah. she says nice things and is pleasant to be around. I like a nice woman. Yeah, yeah, that is sexy. Yeah, it's better for me. And I also think in a world just going to the physicalness of today where. It seems that women put their their assets on display yeah. a lot more easily yeah. and put it on social media and OnlyFans and everything. To take the physicality off the table and just say kindness is, yeah. is really is sexy. There's a yeah. woman, uh, I, I, she's amazing. I, re I really, really like spending time with her. And oh, she's, whenever his I'm... Name? <laughs> no, his name's Bridget. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> no, whenever I go to San Diego, I hang out with this girl and then yeah. there'll be like, you know, models or girls that come to the shows and they're like, every time you're down here, you just hang out with that girl. I'm like, she's so nice to me. Wow. She's just the nicest person. She never has anything ill to say. Like, she's wow. just like pleasant. And and I just, I think that that, I think that's what I thought at first when I was wow. trying to search my brain. It's just be nice. 
Kindness is good. Is there a reason why this girl that you speak so highly of isn't uh, like a, a permanent fixture in your life? A girlfriend or a steady? Well, one, she lives far away. San Diego is too far for me to be in a relationship with someone. Yeah, I'm, I and got then... like a five mile rule. It's like, <laughs> it really, as you get older, it's you're like, if, if I can't drive to your house in 15 minutes. Yeah. You're like, are you going to live in my house? Because that would be yeah. a lot easier yeah. if you could just live in my But then the other part is I'm already working. I'm working on too much of my stuff right now. Like but your own personal yeah, stuff. Dude, yeah, I'm got only it, 93 days sober. Good for you. Yeah, man. I'm working really hard on all that stuff. I'm doing a lot of good, treatment good. on other things in oh, my life. Oh, good, and, buddy. Uh, so good. That's, that's probably what... Good. I yeah. think that's... And you know what? I'll say this, to have a kind person in your life yeah. that while you're going through that part of your journey, that that is very valuable. Oh, for sure. Because when someone's kind like that, they're not judgmental. They're not kind of like playing mind games with you if yeah. you, all that positive energy is just what you need so uh, if, uh, in the 12 steps one of the things is like you you know you apologize to people you've wronged or whatever okay and so this speaks to the kindness thing i was like texting a girl the other day like hey, i just want to let you know like i'm working on myself and like if, you know if there's any weirdness you know i'm sorry most people are very receptive to that yeah her response was like yeah you have a problem i was like yeah 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 i need to work on that she's like you should get help i was like yeah i'm getting uh, like i was like that's I, what this is i yeah. didn't expect it to be uh, that aggressive i thought the accepting apology would be a lot different but um yeah, yeah just ki- having some kind people in your life is Great. huge for that that's yeah. a, that that was a surprising uh, but um uh beautiful answer thanks i love that yeah well, buddy, uh, let's get you plugged up here. Yeah. Let's tell the world where they can find you, where they can see you do your stand-up. Sure. Where, are you promoting a book or a podcast or anything like that? I'm recording my uh, first one-hour special, wow. 18 years of comedy, my first one-hour wow. special um, in Nashville on the 9th and the 10th. Okay. Uh, so you can go to jeffdow.com to check that out. I'm also on tour every single weekend. I work every weekend. Where can they see your schedule online? JeffDye.com also. And then I have a podcast, uh, which is on my YouTube channel. Um, and it's called, um, you wouldn't be good for this podcast because it's called uh, Everybody's Got a Price. And you want someone that's got no money. You know, these guys who are like, oh, I'd do that for 100 bucks. You'll come in there, you're going to go, I don't know, a billion? I'll do that for a billion couple dollars? Couple of bill. Couple of bill. <laughs> couple of B. <laughs> but the podcast is very fun. It's me and Josh Nelson. It's called Everybody's Got a Price. Maybe we'll have you on, and then you can uh, you can say, I'd pay this much to see uh, someone do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It'd be fun. Or I could, could kind of work on becoming homeless and then come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. If you ever have a fall from grace, grace. <laughs> you can uh, come on the podcast and earn some money. But it's very, very good. Come check. Yeah. Or, uh, go check that out. Uh, Jeff Dye. Um, JeffDye.com and then uh, my YouTube channel just YouTube backslash JeffDye great buddy well thanks for being here thanks for and, having me uh, I hope you uh, you find your big foot yeah we're gonna um, folks what a treat Jeff Die. and if you don't get to see him live in this life go to the graveyard just look for Jeff Died he'll be there and uh, that's <laughs> it for today on the Hall Highway podcast until next time chicken chow mein baby <laughs>